<clears throat> sure. um, so I'm going to basically try to visualize some of the things we're talking about. Um, how close do I have to stand on this thing? Is this good? Okay, so um, here's the simplest visualization uh, that I've used to visualize this, uh, designing for the circular economy. Uh, so if you look to the right here, you see circular economy going in circles. Uh, basically, um, if you think of the idea of a tree, um, and a tree um, you know, drops its branches and its leaves, and those branches and leaves, the, it's not actually waste, it actually becomes food for the next life of the tree or other trees. And in essence, that's what the circular economy is attempting to do, is design more like nature. Um, in contrast, what we do is part of the linear economy. So most of what we do is we take materials, we make them into something, and then we throw them away forever. And so you can see that might be problematic. Um, so we'll kind of go into this transition more as um, we talk today. Uh, and then finally, recycling in the middle, where it attempts to recycle a few of those products over again, but eventually those materials become waste. Um, what circular economy attempt is attempting to do is redesign waste from the beginning. So in essence, it's trying to say, there is no waste, and to make sure that the waste becomes food for the next products. So that's what we'll be talking about today, this transition. Um, so I'll be using uh, policy, uh, something called the butterfly diagram, and shared language. This is my three-piece suit. So um, starting with policy, um, I'm going to go into a few policies that um, are sh actually accelerating this transition to the circular economy that you might or might not know of. So apologies for repeating things for people, um, but. Do remember that most of these, um, actually all of these policies happened this year, so we're not late to the game. So this is uh, the European Union. I'm guessing most of you, or some of you, have heard about the uh, ban on plastics, sending these plastics. Uh, this happened a few days ago, um, and a lot of people in Europe um, say that because of the movie Blue Planet, uh, it was a series actually by David Attenborough, and he talks about, um, you know how there will be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050, and it shows all of this destruction that they found during filming this, and it helped awaken people to um, the impacts of uh, some of these plastics and a linear economy. Um, and so um, th I think there's another decision behind this that we have to remember, um, and that's something called the China, the China sword policy. Um, and if you don't know what that is, China is our number one recycler, uh, the world's number one recycler, and it says who, who can wield the sword shall rule, and you have recyclers trying to you know, grab the sword out. Um, and basically it's saying that China has made its standards so high for the cleanliness of their recycling that most recyclers can't meet it. And so now most of our recycling is not going anywhere. Uh, maybe in the dump, I don't know exactly what's going to happen to it. But that's basically what we're facing, and this is the problem slide. So. Um, um, behind this decision, there's a few other decisions which I'm going to break down. First is the human impacts of having a linear economy. This is a movie called Plastic China. Uh, in essence, this is an amazing movie about mountains of plastic waste in China um, and these, their citizens basically dying from it. And uh, you see the rivers getting polluted. Um, and so this kind of woke up China and the Chinese people to not become a plastic China and basically become what they call beautiful China. Um, and so they started to implement some of these policies. And an important one that ties the two together, the EU and the China um, policy, is an agreement that they agreed upon um, for moving towards a circular economy. Um, and basically, this is on the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, which mission is to uh, accelerate the transition to a circular economy. So they've agreed to basically use circular economy as a way to agree upon policies, how to uh, impact businesses, business decisions, and what types of products make it to the market. So this is what's going to affect us as a world economy, um, and obviously uh, this is some things we need to think about uh, in America. So first I'm going to break down uh, what is the linear economy, and then use a shirt uh, to, do, to do that. Uh, so it's the idea of a take-make-waste uh, economy. So let's say I'm a designer, I make this wonderful shirt, 
I have a buyer who wants to buy this shirt. Um, the buyer, I'm going to put them at the bottom of the graphic there, talk about how that shirt gets grown. It needs to have some kind of material to grow. It needs energy to, you know, to dig materials, to make buttons or zippers uh, or the fabric. Eventually that pollutes. Then eventually that's part of the take phase. Um, moving along, the materials go to my maker who then makes the design of my shirt. And then eventually through a series of distribution channels, it eventually gets to the buyer. And now the customer is happy. I get my paycheck as a designer. My business is paid. Everyone's happy. Story is over. But you know that's not the story. End of the story. Um, we also have this huge impact of waste, as you see. So this is the system um, that we push. This is the policies that we support and the businesses and designs that we create. So what circular economy is attempting to do is how do we shift beyond that? Uh, and they use something called the butterfly diagram to help us transition and rethink about this economy. So um, this diagram is a bit complex, but if we're going to design like nature, nature is complex. So we need tools to help us visualize basically systems within systems. So don't get scared of this next slide. It's a bit uh, complicated. But I will break this down and make it easier. But I just wanted to explain that complexity is something that we need to embrace in this economy. So let's break it down. Um, top of the diagram, uh, increase the reuse of renewables. Um, then what circular economy asks us to do is to break out materials into two types of materials. Uh, one side is biological, like wood, that can break down. The other side is technical, which is like metals, that don't break down. And then as you move those to the system, how do we reuse those materials? So the, the most, um, and this, this is what David was talking about, the most effective uses of some of these materials is part of the first two loops, the inner loops of the circular economy. So uh, this is repair and then reuse. And in the middle, you have something called uh, share. And basically, what it's saying is the repair phase, obviously, we know we need to fix our clothes, maybe create businesses in our communities around repairing. And that helps keep the uh, materials close by and keeps them longer. If it's fast fashion and it's materials that just break down, then they just end up eventually just going to dump. So the key is good materials, um, reuse materials. So let's say the shirt wants to be used in the community. So we can use a sharing platform of some sorts to, to, to share that shirt and give it a longer life. Uh, moving along, refurbish. We all know uh, uh, Patagonia, they use this model. It's sort of bigger processes, sending all their clothes back to a factory, which updates them and then sells them back into their stores. So it's a longer distribution channel, so it's further away from the user, um, requiring more energy. And then does anyone know the last loop here? Recycle. The last, uh, it's called the loop of last resort in the circular economy. So basically the goal of a lot of what we're talking about today is how do we stay on these inside loops? Um, all these inside loops keeps the shirt a shirt. All the, all the, you know, the time that went into making that shirt, it stays a shirt. But once you start recycling the product, you start melting it down. You start tearing it apart into its pieces. So that requires a lot more energy. So this is the technical side of that. Um, so I'm going to move to the last part, which is the biological side. Um, my metaphor or my journey of the shirt kind of ends here. Uh, so cascades is the idea that the shirt becomes a rag, and then the rag becomes stuffing for a car, and then eventually, hopefully, it breaks down. Uh, in a better way. Um, so these parts, bio, a biochemi biochemical breakdown, I don't know how to do that in textile, so maybe someone can teach me, uh, but basically how to extract biochemically and break down these products even further. And then lastly, uh, aerobic digestion, composting, biogas, uh, and then biosphere restoration is basically, can we take those clothes, put them back on the farm that made the, farm, made the clothes in the first place? Um, and restore the actual uh, farm that created the product. So that's the butterfly diagram. Uh, today, try to think about this diagram as you, you know, hear about these ideas. What part of the circular economy are we in, and how do we keep them in, this, in the circular economy longer? 
uh, before we break down the product. This is Ellen MacArthur's, uh, this is basically the center of the circuit economy. If you understand this diagram, you understand the circuit economy. Now designing for it is a whole other mission, and that's what we hope to get together with our community to uh, build on those ideas. So now you know how to read this. Um, this is bringing it back home, so you know, we all know that Seattle is a leader in this thinking. So if we can have a shared language around circular economy, around how to design for uh, closed loops, slowing loops, like those inner loops, um, we can actually influence politics in this country, um, and hopefully worldwide. So we'll be doing something called the Open Source Circular Economy event. Uh, this is going to be in June 2019. Uh, we want policymakers here, designers, uh, businesses coming together yearly uh, every year in June to basically come together in a sharing type of approach um, so we can build a circular economy collectively. Uh, thanks for your time. And you can email me at this email. Not really a question, my name is Ron Ray. Uh, this rhetoric has been evolved to sustainability, and I'm now at Benefits as a event core navigator. I just want to mention the movie Classic China real quick. It's an amazing movie, <laughs> really enlightening. And it's also not just despair, it's, there's also a lot of hope in that movie with the girl that we saw pictured up there, and the way she wants to improve her life. So you can see it in the movie, it's just a great movie. Oh, thank you for bringing it up. Thank you. Hi. Um, do you know of any organizations of designers who are looking at a product that's Design, you know, at that, that free stage that we need them to be looking at so that materials can be products can enter the circular economy. Do you think Seattle? Know, yeah. There's somewhat, you know, yeah. Not, are, there, are there any trade organizations or? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. Um, I was wondering to bring this into the presentation or not, uh, but there's an organization called IDEO who created something called uh, uh, human-centered design, which many of us know what it is. They basically realized that human-centered design was too human-centered and forgot about the bigger impacts of design. So they took that same framework of sort of phases of design and created another thing called the uh, circular design guide. Um, and so we, at that event that uh, we're putting together, we'll be using that event and staying in the understand phase. There's four different phases. So all of us are going to come together and practice. We've already started practicing with that tool. So, you know, a lot of companies are already doing this, but we're just trying to figure out how do we scale this so more people can learn it. And in essence, human-centered design's goal is anyone can design, and I think that's what they're trying to do with the Circular Economy Design Guide as well. So, thank you.